Hi everyone and welcome to part 5 in our shopkeeper system series. In the last episode we got our NPC to show us his inventory inside his store. And what we're doing in this episode is making it so that when we click on those items we are taking money away from the player and adding an item to our inventory. So first things first we need to add a wallet to store money for our character. So let's go edit our player character here and add a new variable for our money. So here we're going to have a, a money value, a variable, sorry, and the variable type for this will be an integer. Now you click compile. We're then going to create a new uh, function. So go to new function and we call this one spend money. And on spend money, we're just going to do a input for this and we're going to set that to an integer of how much we actually want to move, remove, sorry, so to an integer, um, money and change that to integer. So in our spend money function, we're gonna drag money out, get minus integer minus integer, connect that up to the money in input, and then set your money back, like so. And if you want, you can output the new uh, value if you want. So let's go output. And that will now output uh, remaining money. Okay. Okay, so now we've got a spend money function. Pretty simple. Uh, we now can use that to uh, spend money on the player. Let's first of all start with our player having some dollar. So let's change our default value here to 500 and click compile. So on our UI, we want to make it so when we click on the button, we are doing something with their player money. So go to your graph, find your button on your variable list, and go to on clicked at the bottom left. This will make the on clicked event for your button. So when it is clicked, we want to get the player character and cast that to the actor which in this case is my third person character. As third person character, I can simply call that spend money feature if I want. But first of all, what I want to do is output um, if I can actually do that or not. So we could do multiple things here. We could uh, make this part of the spend money function, or we can make a little Boolean at the start here. So let's make a little Boolean at the start here. As third person character, I'm going to get uh, money and I'm going to check if the money is greater than the cost of the item so we're going to get item details out get and split this by right click on it so if money is greater than or equal to cost put that into a branch and if it's true we're going to spend money and the money we're going to spend is the cost. So drag that down there. Like so. Click compile. So now we've got the actual button working here, but we haven't got a way of seeing this in action. So let's add something to our UI to show us the amount of money the player has. So go to your shopkeeper UI, and on here we need to in put in how much money the player has. So I'm going to put it just below our shopkeeper uh, text value here. So here I've got a border with a text in it. So I'm going to keep this quite simple. I'm just going to right click on the border here and wrap with a vertical box like so. And inside that vertical box, I'm going to drag another text value into it. So now my border has a neighbor of a text block. This text block is going to be the amount of money the player has. So let's change the size of our vertical box like so. And on the border, I'm going to tell this one to fill it. And we're going to make it fill only 0.5% of it. And the text block, we're also going to make it fill and again 0.5. And these, this means these two will share the space. So if I change the size of my box here, you can see they share it quite evenly. So with that done, I'm going to tell my text block here to be horizontally aligned. 
So let's make that horizontally aligned there. And let's change the text value this is going to actually be. So let's go to the graph and go to the event construct. At the start of this, before we do the for loop, I'm just going to get the player's money and store it as a text value there. So here we're going to do a uh, get player character and cast that to our third person character. From there, I'm going to store a reference to our character by promoting it to a variable. Like so. Next, I'm going to create my own function here. So the function here is going to be called update player wallet. And in here, we're going to drag the player character out, which is get. And then from there, we're going to get the money they have. And we're going to build that text value to mean something. So click on your text and we're going to change the name of it to uh, player money text and tick is variable. In here, we're going to drag that player money text variable out and choose get. And then from there, set text. Now, I don't want to drag just money into it. I want to format it a little bit so I can bind multiple strings to it. So from the in text here, we go format text. And in there, I'm going to do a open curly bracket and we'll put in amount, close curly bracket, gold. And the amount, when I push enter, appears as a variable input. So I drag that into money. And it will now output money then gold. So if I click compile and go back to my game, not my game, sorry, go back to the graph and add that to our game here. So on completed of doing all this, we're just going to take it to update the wallet and then go back to the game. It will now say how much money the player has. Okay, 500 gold. So when I click on these, I want that value to change. So this is actually taking money away from the player, but it's not updating this. That's because we need to tell our slots to, when we click on them, to update that function. So go to the graph. So on the button, when we click on it, we need to tell the widget above it, which is the shopkeeper main UI, that we need to tell it to update the money. So the way we do that is through an event dispatcher. So click on new event dispatcher, and we'll call this one uh, money spin and we'll drag that out and choose call I can in at the end there click and compile when you're finished so now if we go back to our shopkeep UI to the graph and after we create this widget and so forth here we have the reference to it we're going to just spread this out a little bit here and we're going to go from the return value and we're going to get that uh, event dispatcher we just done. So we're going to do bind, and you'll see bind event to money spent. And just insert that in there, like so. This will give you an event, and what we're going to do on here is just tell that event to update money. So we'll make a new custom event here called um, button clicked. And the event is going to be plugged into that. And that event is going to just update the player wallet. So let's drag that in and update player wallet. So when we click on a button, it's basically going to shout out that that money spent event is being shout out. Okay, it's like a broadcast. This thing is now, when it built that slot, it's told this event to listen out for that broadcast. So when we click on it, the broadcast is going to be picked up by this event and call the update player widget. Now when I go into the game, And click on the button here you can see it is now telling it to update our money and if I click on here you can see it doesn't let me spend it but that's it okay so now we've got these items added like so we're going to make it so they actually add it to the actual players inventory so for that we're going to create the players inventory component so right click new blueprint class active component and we call this one 
player inventory. Or just call it inventory actually. Inventory component. And open this up. Now if you see my inventory series, very similar to that, but we'll make it a bit simpler. So on my variables here, I'm gonna add a new variable and we're gonna make a map. So let's do our inventory map and we're going to change the type of it to integer then click on the pill icon and change it to a map which is the bottom one and we want both of the key and the value to be integers a map works in the sense that it works in pairings so we have a key and a value associated to that key so the key in this case is going to be a reference to the item id and the uh, value is going to be the quantity that we have on our player click compile and what we're going to do is going to make a new function here called add to inventory add to inventory is going to require an item id so item id and also a quantity both of these should be integers and click compile to add for inventory, we're going to drag our inventory map out, choose get, and from there we can go add, and here you can see the two keys available to you. And so the first one refers to the item ID key, and the quantity is the value. And what add does, it's quite nice, is that if the item ID already exists, it'll just add it onto the existing stack. If it doesn't exist, it'll add a new stack to our map and associate the new quantity to it. So very simple, click compile and we're done there. So then when we're going into our shop item UI and we click on the button, the I update player widget is being called up, update player wallet is being called, but I also want to tell the player character that their inventory is changing. Okay, so this button clicked here, we need to add a input to this event. So to do that, we have to go back to our slot and click on our graph then our event dispatcher. And this will require an input. So go new input, and the input here is going to be quantity. And that'd be integer. And we click compile. So now, if I change that, sorry, change that first of all to one. Now, if I compile that and go back to my shopkeep UI, you'll see quantity is now part of our custom event. So from there, I can get my player character reference out, which we made earlier, which is get. And from that, I can get the inventory component, which I have not yet added. So let's add that first. So I click on my character here. Let's add that component. Inventory component. Back to our shopkeep. And that should now appear here. Get inventory component. And from that, add to inventory function. Um, so we've got a quantity. We need the item ID as well. So that's what I forgot. So let's go back to our shop keep slot. And back to our event dispatch. We'll add an item ID as well to this. Let's make that above that. So it's uh, similar to everything else. So item ID is going to come from here, like so. Compile that. And then back to our shopkeeper UI. And you'll see it's now updated the custom event again. We can plug that into our add to inventory. And click compile. Now we haven't made a system up for the inventory for the player to be seen, but that is actually adding it to that data array. So in the next part, what we we're doing is adding a screen for the player to see their own inventory so you can see the items being added to their inventory successfully. And that brings us to the end of this episode. Thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to like it and subscribe it. And if you have any comments, questions or queries, leave a message below in the comment boxes. 
If you want to see the next episode right now, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lely, just like all these fine people have as well, and sign up for at least $1 to get access to that new video, plus all the other videos that we have available for our patrons. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you all next time. Bye-bye.